Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we have some really fun art ideas planned and I can't wait to share them with you. So on my community tab, you guys actually voted to have a longer video. So this is gonna be more like a hangout and enjoy the ideas. You can either bust out your sketchbook too and draw with me or if you have homework or you just need to clean your house or anything like that, just do your thing and we'll talk art. With that being said, we're not going to do a super long intro, so I hope you like these ideas. Let's have some fun. Let's bust out some colored pencils for the first sketchbook idea. This is about to get colorful and fun. So we opened up our sketchbook and now I am just taking a colored pencil and yeah, about that fun. You wanna know what we're about to do? We're drawing some monsters on this page. Now, as far as these monsters go, you're gonna notice that I do a certain technique throughout this entire piece. So what I do is I stick with one color per monster and I let the sketchbook page kind of be the actual color of the monster, but the colored pencil is sort of like the shading or I guess glowy effect, however you want to interpret it. Now, I kind of got inspiration for all of these monsters from different places, and honestly, most of them just came from my head. However, there are a few that admittedly were inspired from like Monsters Incorporated and Animal Crossing, so let me know which one you think was inspired by Hammy from Animal Crossing. I literally just started playing and Hammy is on my island right now. I'm not sure how I feel about Hammy yet, but right now we're buds, you know. I give Hammy a not so great gift and he gives me a better one back, so I'm, I'm really digging him. Anyway, I decided to kind of make this page really colorful because colorful pages make me happy in my sketchbook. So you could theoretically do this with just one color if you want. However, for me, when I go through my sketchbook and I'm prepping to do another project, seeing these colorful pages with just lighthearted doodles, they kind of encourage me to keep pushing myself and doing more in my sketchbook. So that is kind of why I decided to do lots of color. Now, since I mentioned gathering inspiration from various video games and movies and stuff for these monsters, I do have a question of the day for you, and I would love to know what your favorite animated movie is. I think, oh, this is a tough one. I absolutely love Shrek. That's probably my all-time favorite. However, I do love Tangled as well. This monster here is just a fun little stretched out rabbit and it just came off the top of my mind. I really don't know where I got that from, but <laughs> it was really fun to do. And I just love how, you know, most rabbits are like all rounded and he's kind of like pointy, but still round and cute in a weird way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I would name him, but what a cute little rabbit dude. So this was definitely fun because, I don't know, when you bust out silly things like this and you just try to show personality through these fun little blobby monsters and stuff, it kind of takes the pressure away from creating art that in my mind is like super, super good or a, a masterpiece. But then when I back away from this, I'm like, wow, I'm actually really happy with this. So I guess the reason why I'm suggesting doing a page full of like little creatures or monsters is because I think drawing all these little like goofy faces on shapes will maybe give you a similar feeling and hopefully it does hopefully it takes that pressure away to perform really well and I, I really just hope that it makes you just not afraid to touch your sketchbook and it makes you want to fill it and if you do multiple colors like me Hopefully when you open your sketchbook later, you're like, wow, 
this looks really cool. Now I want to push myself. Now I want to do another thing. And before you know it, maybe you have a couple pages done in your sketchbook. Here it is. These are the monsters. Hmm. We're gonna use a few different art supplies for this idea. We have our paint brushes here. I just showed you some gesso. This is a giant paint brush, which we will be using. Paint water. Yes, this jar looks disgusting, but we won't talk about it. <laughs> and here is some washi tape. Now, fun fact about this washi tape, I actually designed it. And I have tons of custom washi tape, mouse pads, pencil cases, vinyl stickers, limited edition prints, and so much more in my shop at mirabyler.com. So if you want to check it out, you can go to mirabyler.com or click the link in the description. But now let's talk about this idea. So I made a little border and now I'm just squirting some gesso all around. Now with this, I use that giant brush that I mentioned and I am quickly spreading it all over the page. Now there is actually a rhyme or reason to this. I like to kind of do this basket weave texture. I do horizontal and vertical strokes. It's kind of like a little, as I said, basket weave. And it kind of creates a nice smooth texture, but kind of textured also. And yeah, it resembles a canvas. Now I'm taking this vine charcoal and we're gonna have some fun with this. This is just basically extra soft, thin charcoal that you can draw on and then either brush it off with your finger or paint right over it. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the techniques that I'm doing so that I can build up to telling you about the idea. So you see here that I also did like a burnt sienna background and that is vital to later because it's gonna show through the painting and I will show you what I mean a little bit later. But the idea, let's talk about this one. Now this painting here is actually filled with a couple ideas, okay? So yeah, bear with me. The first part of it is to paint a place that you either miss, that you've been before, or a place that you really, really want to go. Now the next thing is I have heard many of you voice your thoughts about being afraid to try new things in the comments and the comments kind of go like this. It's like, Mira, I bought these nice art supplies, but I'm afraid to use them. Like, what if I ruin them and what if I mess up? And I read these comments and I just want to give you guys big hugs because I've been there and it is a scary thing. It really is. But this here, this idea, I'm hoping will give you courage to build up to bigger projects. Now, if acrylic is not your thing, you can do this with other things too. However, I'm going to talk about acrylic paint for a couple reasons. So acrylic and oil painting can be kind of pricey. And I think that's where a lot of intimidation creeps in. You know, when you buy a canvas, that really adds up. And then when you go to paint on a giant canvas, I mean, you can do smaller ones too. There's this weird pressure that creeps in like, I feel like I need to paint a masterpiece. And again, I've talked to some of you guys in the comments and <laughs> some of you have voiced feeling similarly. So I feel like if you buy a bottle of gesso and you lay that down in your sketchbook to kind of mimic the canvas, it saves so much money, first of all. <laughs> and second of all, that pressure to paint a masterpiece kind of melts away because your sketchbook is your safe place. You can close that and nobody sees it. So you can express, as I said, places you wanna go or just anything really. It is your visual diary and because it's your sketchbook, you make the rules for it. Nobody makes those rules for you. So with that being said, I, I hope that you feel the freedom to express yourself and 
right now, as I said, I'm expressing places I want to go because I just have that itch to travel. But also, yeah, I didn't feel like making a masterpiece with this. And this actually saves quite a bit of money. I don't have to pay, you know, X amount for a canvas when I can just use a piece of paper and some gesso. So with that, it actually gave me more freedom and more courage to try things that I normally wouldn't. So let me tell you about what I'm trying. First of all, look at the style of this painting. This is not typical to what I normally do on my channel. You can see gaps where the underpainting shows through and you can see some of that vine charcoal showing through. It's a little more whimsical, a little more impressionistic. And you know me, my strokes are usually much tighter. I usually go for more realistic pieces, but I've always wanted to try this style and I chicken out when it comes to a canvas. So, you know, using some gesso and just going for it on a page like this, it took so much pressure away and I just felt free. You know, it felt so fun to just toy around with this and uh, I really enjoyed it. Now, another thing I was practicing with this is color theory. And now a lot of you ask me about color theory and you always ask, you know, how do you go about picking your colors? And I would totally recommend starting with something like this, you know, work it out on a page before you take it to a canvas. I was actually taught that back in college when I took a painting class and it helped me so much. We had to do tons of little thumbnail paintings and sketches to sort of like hash out the big painting. And it actually expedited the big painting. Like the process was so much easier because the colors were figured out basically. So for those of you who maybe want to practice color theory and you're afraid of ruining your canvas because of that too, this is another good reason to do this. I can't pump this up enough. I really enjoy it. <laughs> now, if you, as I said, if you don't want to paint places that maybe you want to go or places you've been, you could paint like people you miss or flowers you like, whatever. You'll actually see me bring up something similar at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, if anything, I just hope that this idea is more of a pep talk for you and gives you courage to tackle bigger things. Now the next idea is very fun, very lighthearted and kind of trendy right now. So gather some stickers if you're a sticker collector uh, you could totally do that. I'm actually using the stickers that I created. And basically I'm collaging them all over one page. And I love sticker pages. That's kind of like the way that I like to collect stickers. Because when I was a kid, I just remember having all these sticker sheets and I never did anything with them. I was too scared. But then I lost the sheets and uh, it was really sad. <laughs> so I don't know, keeping them preserved in my sketchbook is a fun little way to go back and look at them. And it makes it colorful, it makes it inviting. And since I actually made these stickers, there's a lot more meaningfulness to it because I can see the things that I accomplished and the things that I drew in sticker form. And it kind of, um, when I flip past pages like this, I just feel encouraged to keep pushing on in my art journey. So anyway, yeah, this is it. It's really fun, really easy, and I hope it jives with you. So for this one, we are taking a copper leaf marker and I'm doing these layered whimsical sorts of clouds. And this one here, guys, we're just gonna get playful. I hope this makes you feel playful and like you can just do fun things like this in your sketchbook. Now I chose a metallic marker because look at that shine in the light. This is gonna be fun when we go to add effects later in the drawing, okay? So yeah, you can choose a metallic or non-metallic. I think it will look cool either way. 
but I basically just did lots of cloud layers and then left a little gap up top. Now I'm coloring in the gap up top with blue and I'm using colored pencils for this and it's going to interact really nicely with this metallic marker because the colored pencil is obviously matte, but this metallic marker is just going to pop off the page. Let me tell you. So we're finishing up the sky and we might have to do a couple layers. Yeah, let's add some pink to that. Now I'm gonna take the same pink that I layered into the sky and I'm gonna incorporate it into the bottom of each cloud. So if you're a beginner artist, this is actually a really great activity for you to practice shading. And if you're more advanced, this might just be great stress relief for you. So basically with this pink, I'm doing a gradient effect. I'm pressing really hard as I start and then I'm making my pencil press lighter as I get to the top of the cloud and it kind of does this little like blendy thing, you know? So yeah, great way to practice shading if you're trying to get the hang of that. And this is more illustrative, it's not realistic. So it kind of releases some pressure to get things just right. Now I did two or three layers of these little gradients just to make it pop off the page a little more. You can do as you please, but yeah. Now, after I do this, look at that. Look at it from a distance. Doesn't that look fun? Doesn't it make you wanna just jump into the sky? Now I'm adding faces onto a couple of the clouds just to make it feel really cute and welcoming. So yeah, this is a fun, cutesy little illustration idea for your sketchbook. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this one. If you do this one, tag me on Instagram because I would love to see all your styles come out and just see how you guys execute this. Let's talk about the next sketchbook idea. Now this one here I think is very approachable for all skill levels. So no matter where you're at, I think this one is very doable for you. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking a marker and I'm just drawing a giant square on my page. However, I'm being mindful of keeping that white border around the edges. I think each, each little border side is about an inch. So now I'm taking a colored pencil that is very similar in shade to that peachy square, but it's darker, so it's like a brownish red, okay? And that's what I'm gonna do my sketch with. It's gonna be a very monochromatic sketch. I'm only gonna use this colored pencil. But what's cool about this idea is because you drew a square in the background, it really brings it to life because that color is showing through. It's a really fun way to play with color, but if you don't have a lot of time, then I highly recommend this technique because you don't have to color everything differently or pick out a color scheme. It's just sort of a fun monochromatic thing. Now, I particularly love this for character design. That's why I'm drawing a person, and this is actually just a self-portrait of me when I was wearing pajamas and I altered it. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's just so fun to do this and it it definitely lifts the pressure of trying to figure out colors, as I said, and you can kind of practice shading with just one pencil. Now, I mean, this is pretty much the same thing as using a regular pencil, except you just added a splash of color, so yeah. Now, there is one drawback to this. Uh, you have to be okay with not being able to erase. <laughs> so if that intimidates you, maybe start out with doing your little square and just a regular pencil over top. It will still look cool, but you know, your sketchbook is your place. So do what makes you feel comfortable. You don't have to take my ideas like word for word. Now, if you try this, um, 
and with any idea in here. I totally welcome you guys to go over to my Instagram and just tag me in the art that you made. Um, yeah, I love checking that little tagged tab on my page, seeing all your artwork. So yeah, if you do any of these ideas, I highly recommend sharing it over there. I should do a little hashtag so you guys can all see each other's art. Oh, what, what, should, what should the hashtag be? Also, if you're wondering why this video is a little longer than the usual video, it is because I did a poll on my community tab and I asked you, what length would you like for the next sketchbook video? And many of you voted 30 minutes. So I'm trying to do a chill, hang out with me, peaceful sort of drawing video. And I'm hoping that as I present these ideas to you that maybe you are creating something as well whether it be stuff in your sketchbook or knitting a scarf or writing a poem anything like that really maybe you're even doing homework or cleaning your house because you know we all probably watch youtube when we do the dishes and laundry right i can't be the only one <laughs> here's the finished sketch <laughs> So this next idea that I'm going to talk about is one that I've actually done in the past, but since we're starting a new year and coincidentally I have a new sketchbook, I thought this would be so fitting to bring up again. And that is a page of goals. Now the beauty about these pages is they are not binding. Basically just write some aspirations, things that you want to do. and. If you finish your sketchbook, it's really fun to look back on to see if you've accomplished any of those and maybe cross them out to feel that satisfaction and triumph. Or alternatively, if you are having trouble filling your sketchbook or you're lacking inspiration, seeing your own goals is a nice way to motivate you to strive for achieving them. So. I'm doing this in a really fun way. I'm actually laying down these blobs and with each blob, I'm actually gonna fill it with a goal. So that way it kind of looks artistic, but also sometimes just a long list is intimidating. So these blobs just feel soft and friendly and uh, less intimidating. Now, some of the goals that I have written is to do larger paintings, like two by three feet, um, to do my art for the process and not for the results, to encourage and uplift others through my art, uh, be okay with changing my mind and going through different art style phases, all sorts of things. You can pause it to read my others if you want, but I hope this one helps you. This last sketchbook idea is really fun. And it's actually very, very similar to the idea I mentioned earlier in this video when I painted Florence, Italy. So if you're not much of a traveler or an adventurer, maybe you're more of a homebody, that idea may not have jived as much with you as it did for somebody who enjoys traveling. However, you can still enjoy doing these fun studies in your sketchbook by... Picking a subject that really captures your interest. So I want to show you this idea with maybe a little bit more freedom to it. And here I'm actually just grabbing something that really inspires me and something that actually brings me a lot of peace outside of art. So it's kind of like combining two hobbies. One would be art and one would be, you know, gardening or hiking in nature. So I picked this really beautiful field of wildflowers. And again, I'm just messing around with trying to loosen up my brush strokes and attempt more of a whimsical, slightly impressionistic style with this piece. So instead of getting caught up on my tighter strokes and trying to achieve that realism that I always go for, I'm just, you know, having fun, adding some whimsy to this and uh, playing with color. So if you have a certain activity that maybe brings you peace, or something that inspires you. Even something that makes you just feel so full of love, like 
your pets. Maybe you have some fur babies that you just really want to paint in your sketchbook. I highly recommend trying this. I think it's fun too to explore different styles of art, like picking artists that you really admire, but maybe your style is slightly different. That could be current artists or artists in history. It's really fun to replicate that and try to achieve that in painting studies. And I think there's a lot to be learned with it, even if it is not the style that you normally do. That's one reason why I like to hop from style to style, because I feel like every time I do that, I just learn so much. And I feel like I'm almost stepping in other artists' shoes. And yeah, I just thoroughly enjoy it. So as I said, this idea is not exactly new. I mentioned it kind of earlier in this video, but I do want to mention it again because I do think it's probably one of my favorite ideas I've ever suggested <laughs> in these videos. And I will definitely link all my other sketchbook idea videos down below for your enjoyment. And I'll also link, I did a series of tiny paintings and I mentioned a lot of, um, uh, Things that bring me inspiration and stuff in those videos and if you are looking for inspiration I think that would be a good source for you and if there's any other inspiring videos I feel like linking down below you'll see them because I want to bring you guys some inspiration and kind of help you overcome your sketchbook fears and accomplish your goals with art this year so if you feel like sharing in the comments maybe tell us an art goal that you have or something that you accomplished recently that you're proud of with your art. And we can all just kind of cheer each other on in the comments. If you have any art fears, maybe you can ask other people how they dealt with them in the comments and we can get a discussion going. One of my fears is actually doing larger paintings. And believe it or not, before I did YouTube, I actually did tons of larger paintings in high school and college. However, for some reason, I just kind of stopped. I don't know what made me stop, but I miss it. But I'm also kind of like scared to go back to it. So that's my goal this year. I have a couple large canvases waiting. I'm so excited to tackle that. Here's the finished piece. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspired you. And uh, I hope it makes you want to create, whether it is art like this or any other creative endeavor. Well, those are all of our sketchbook ideas this time around. I know a lot of these ideas are not super new, but I thought since you know we're in the new year, I just wanted to present some ideas that I'm really jiving with lately. And I hope that they just inspired you too. Before we go, I just want to remind you, I have some really cool merch in my shop like this. So feel free to check it out if you want pencil cases or stickers, all kinds of fun stuff. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good day. Bye.